What's going on guys? Welcome to Rhino Review Stuff. I'm Rhino and I review stuff. The stuff I've got to review today is the upgraded model of something that I reviewed in the far distant past. Today, I've got the Mayano Caster. Let's check it out. So this is the Mayano Caster E2. Uh, podcast equipment bundle. It's got a dynamic mic, and the mic is XLR. Uh, as with all Mayano products, it does come in a very fancy box, and it's got lots of good information. So the AME2 is the actual model of the Mayano caster here. We've got the PD100 microphone. It is a dynamic microphone with cardioid polar pattern to reduce background noise for cleaner audio. We'll see about that. Nothing on the bottom of the box, and on the back here, we get all the usual warnings, built-in battery, multi-channel mixing, multi-channel streaming, voice effects, uh, noise reduction, that's pretty handy, and a premium audio DSP. First thing in the package, we've got the beefy user manual, and uh, yes, it does have lots of different languages. We've got a letter to the customers, uh, tells you about different things and quirks you might find. We got the tips here to make your audio sound better. We've got this fancy, uh, plastic coated sheet, which tells you exactly how to plug things in, and that's going to be very handy. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it handy. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. So here is the Mayano Caster E2. We got our four soft, squishy buttons here. We got some tuner knobs right there. Low, mid, high. Gain, volume, monitor. Because yes, you can, of course, plug your headphones into this and do some in-ear monitoring or over-the-ear monitoring. Uh, we got pad volume, we got pitch, we got reverb, presets, sidechain, music only, dry, wet, loopback, denoise, and then we got these two little doodads here to really spice things up. And yes, we're going to test all of this out. Taking a look here at the input-output, we do have two headphone jacks. These are 3.5 millimeter. We got nothing on this side, and on the back we've got mic one, which XLR. We've got an instrument, we've got the mic settings for... Uh, low, low pass, high pass, etc. Mic two, auxiliary in, a monitor speaker. We've got live output one, live output two, USB C and USB C charging, five volt, power button, and lights. So, yes, this actually does have some lights. And it says, uh, microphone on and off. So, I guess there's a little switch there inside to turn off the microphone. Next up is the accessories pouch. Looks like we got a 3.5 millimeter cable and we've got USB. Very thick and rubbery. There's the 3.5 millimeters. Another 3.5 millimeters. This one has uh, three poles. This one has three poles. Hmm. So podcasting cable and podcasting cable. And we have an extra long USB-C cable. So USB-C and USB-A. Next up, we've got our XLR cable. It is mm, metal for the most part on this piece right here. The cable looks like it is about six feet long. Very nice. Next up, we've got a little extendo boom arm type thing. Uh, it's got a little mounting point right there, and it does have the mount here in the box. It's one of the clamp types, so you can clamp it to your desk. This right here, of course, is adjustable to get your microphone pointed in just the right position. And here is the desk clamp. It does not have any padding right there. However, it is padded up here on the top, so you're not going to mark the surface of your desk. And the last thing out of the box is this surprisingly stout all-metal microphone. I am kind of shocked that it's such a nice quality one compared to the Mayano Caster Lite, which came with, well, kind of a rinky-dink plastic number. This is downright fashionably awesome. Uh, looks like we got our little adjustment knob there to tighten things up and keep it in a position. And right here we do have the threaded mount to put it on the arm. Yes, the arm. This is my first test of the Mayano Caster E2. I'm talking directly into the microphone that came with the kit. And uh, yes, all of the settings things, uh, it's running through the Miano Caster E2 right Yeah, And as you can see, I've turned up the volume here on the 48 volt phantom power setting so I can run the XLR. And I have pumped up the volume over here. Uh, the rest of these are pretty well in the middle. You can see I did kind of fiddle with the lows, mids, and highs, but not that much. I just kind of turned the high down. Another thing that is a must do when you're using any new microphone is you got to go into the Windows settings and take off that enhance the audio thing. That ruins all the audio. 
I know that for a fact, so that is one of the first things I do when I plug one of these in. So now that you've heard what it sounds like kind of at a default, let's see what it sounds like when you set it up for yourself. Now, I have it adjusted the lows, mids, and highs. The lows and the mids are turned up ever so slightly, and the high is turned down ever so slightly. I'm going to turn up the low. It's about halfway. I'm going to turn up the mid. It's about halfway. I'm going to turn down the highs just slightly more. And this is what my voice sounds like. As for pitch, I am going to adjust the pitch. I'm going to lower the pitch ever so slightly and see what that does to my voice. This is what it sounds like when you've adjusted the pitch. And I've adjusted the pitch ever so slightly more. And uh, now I'm going to adjust the pitch while I'm talking. La 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 I have no idea what that was like. All right, let's check out some of the features here of the Maonocaster E2. We've got the ABC buttons here, and these buttons actually are self-recording. So you record your up to one minute audio clip on A, B, or C. These buttons here are also recordable. These are customizable for any sort of sound font or sound thingy you want to put in there. Uh, let's go ahead and test out button A here. Now that it's blinking, it is recording. So this is me talking to the recording for button A. I am talking right now to button A specifically, and when I press it later, you'll be able to hear what I'm saying to button A. Now let's play it back. Now that it's blinking, it is recording. So this is me talking to the recording for button A. I am talking right now to button A specifically, and when I press it later, you'll be able to hear what I'm saying to button A. And there you go. That's what it's like when you do a little bit of a recording there and play it back. I think that's pretty awesome. Now, as you might be able to guess, my all-time favorite setting here is the pitch control. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go through all the settings now. This is pretty low. This is the deep male voice, and I really like how the deep male voice sounds. Right here is about where I like to keep it, just slightly lowered. Now I've turned it up about halfway, and this is what it sounds like when you turn it up about halfway, obviously. And this is the child voice slash high-pitched lady voice. This sounds ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now this corner of the device are the different audio effects. We've got the reverb effect here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the reverb up. And this is what it sounds like when you're using the red reverb setting. I'm not quite sure what it means. They've got the list here in the manual. However, I don't know which one's which. This is what it sounds like when you were talking to the green reverb preset. Again, this is the green reverb preset, and this is what it sounds like. Next, we've got kind of a deep purple. This is the deep purple preset. Deep purple preset. <laughs> right here, we've got the yellow reverb preset, and this is what it sounds like. Next up, we've got the Light Shocking Electric Blue preset, and this is what it sounds like on the reverb presets for the Light Shocking Electric Blue. Then we've got the Bright Purple, kind of the uh, gamer aesthetic purple. This is what it sounds like with the purple setting on the reverb presets. And then we're back to red. And after listening back to that, I can see that the yellow was in fact the off preset for the reverb presets. Next up, we've got the sidechain button here. Sidechain mode is activated to lower the volume of background music, so if I had some background music coming through these pad buttons over here, the sidechain would lower that and you would be able to hear my voice more clearly. Music only mode? Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. It removes the vocals from music and you only hear the music. That's pretty neat. On dry mode, that's where you have it like this. This indicates that all of the other presets, every button you've activated is completely gone, except for the regular old microphone. And you could probably tell the difference there because there's no more pitch adjustment. And when it's off, that means you are recording with all the other settings involved. I kind of like it with all the settings. When you turn on loopback mode, it allows the Maonocaster to record the different system sounds so it pulls it from your computer or, you know, wherever your computer is. It could be over there. I, I don't know. 
Anyways, it's going to take those system sounds and it's going to record those. It's going to add those not only to your monitors, but it's also going to add them to whatever you're recording to. When you have it in the off setting like this, you're not going to get all those system sounds unless you've got that set up in OBS separately. And of course, denoise is pretty self-explanatory. It takes away the background noise. This is the step one of the denoise effect. This is the step one of the denoise effect. Again, this is step one of the denoise effect. This is step two of the denoise effect. This is step two of the denoise effect. And this is what it sounds like when it's turned off. I'm probably going to keep it turned off. Now, another fun feature that just does not get enough credit is this auto tune. You do have a 12 step auto tune here. You press it, it turns on. It's not a physical button, but this is what you sound like in the key of A. This is the key of A. Loving you is easy cause you're beautiful. Do -do 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 -do. So after giving it my real due diligence, this is the audio I can get out of the Meonocaster E2. And I think it sounds very comparable to my Samson mic, which is mounted up there. Um, I will go ahead and switch to that now, and you will definitely notice a difference because this is so close to my face, and it's not picking up any of the extra room noise. So let me switch to that real quick. And this is me talking to the Samson mic. So this is the audio from the Samson mic. It picks up a lot of the extra room noise that the Meano caster here just does not pick up. I kind of like that. I kind of like that a lot. And back to the mic that comes with the Meano caster E2. I think it sounds really great. I don't much care for having to have a microphone this close to me, but really it's very small and it's pretty unobtrusive. Um, I was actually able to do my overhead shots with this thing still being in front of me and it didn't like encumber me in any way. So. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal to have a microphone this close to you. Of course, it would be a little bit better if I had it mounted up over here, and I will probably do that in the near future. What are my final thoughts here? The Meonocaster E2 kit? Well, I really like it. I, I keep looking down at it just to, just to admire it. It's got some really fun, really cool settings. I like that you can adjust the audio to sound however you want it to sound. That makes me very happy. That makes Rhino a happy boy. Um, hopefully you were impressed with some of the audio effects as well. I will be messing around there with the customizable buttons, and maybe I'll throw in one of those oof, or, you know, some of those random sound effects that all these Ubertubers like to include in their videos. That might be kind of fun to have on there, maybe a squeal or a boo. Probably not. But I do like the way it sounds, and I really enjoy having this Manocaster E2 here on my desk. And I cannot wait to move into my new studio at the end of this week and uh, get this thing set up full force to be my full-time microphone. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave some links down there in the description as usual. So like, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!